Good evening, wall fans. That's right, it's Thursday. Hopefully you caught that tease earlier uh, where Zofia decided that she hates the studio all of a sudden despite the fact that she's a real boss around here. Uh, so thanks for joining us. This is going to be episode 24. We're going to kick things off right now, uh, you know, because that's kind of how we, how we do it. Um, so stick around. Going to be going interactive. Lots of stuff going on tonight. A couple big announcements. You want to stick around. Uh, don't forget to to download, subscribe, like, tell a friend, all those great things. <clears throat> all right, wall fans, welcome to, as always, another exciting edition of Go Tell to the Wall podcast. I am your host, the one and only Sean O'Rourke, and this is episode... 24 and welcome here we are coming at you from los angeles as always having a little bit of computer issues here but that happens it happens we're okay we're on track here we're on track we are going live for those of you listening looks like number one fan darshan is already on uh making up for missing last week so so i'm proud of you for that darshan you were getting in danger of losing your number one fan status um not not really that close to it but it happened it might have happened we'll, we'll pretend it might have happened because you missed one uh, all right, we're getting right into things. Social plugs, as always, for those of you listening at home, you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash go tell to the wall. Uh, of course, on Twitter at tell the wall pod, or you can follow my personal Twitter account, which it seems more people enjoy following my personal Twitter account than they do tell the wall pod. That's okay, uh, but at Magic Muppet. Or just search my name, search Go Tell to the Wall. Uh, and of course, you can find, if, if you're not, if you're watching on the live feed or you're seeing this somewhere else on YouTube or anything, uh, you can, of course, find the actual podcast on iTunes, uh, Google Play, Podomatic is where it's hosted, uh, or really anywhere that you obtain your podcasts. So check us out, search Go Tell to the Wall. Uh, as I said, we are on the live feed tonight with Facebook Live. We just had to do it. It's it's been it's been a long week. I have a sprained ankle. It's madness right now, and I just needed a bit of a crowd to feed off of. So we're doing it. And I will tell everyone right now. If you didn't see the teaser, there's gonna be some changes coming. We're not talking major change. Well, one of them might be a major change, but we are. There's gonna be a couple changes here, and I'm gonna announce those as the show goes on. So stick around. Uh, and actually, one of those I'm gonna talk about right now. I'm looking at my notes. This happens sometimes. Uh, so what we're thinking about doing at Go Tell to the Wall is expanding a little bit. This is a weekly podcast. I go for about an hour every week. Sometimes it's an hour and five minutes. Sometimes, you know, it's like 55 minutes, but around an hour weekly. Record on Thursdays, live feed on Thursdays, gets posted on Fridays. Uh, but what we're thinking about doing is adding an additional episode in there every week. Uh, so toying around with that. If, if you have a feeling either way about it, um, let me know. Hit me up on Facebook or on Twitter. Uh, but essentially what we're most likely going to do is, is not do another hour-long weekly thing, but like a 15 to 30-minute kind of additional podcast each week, um, a la like episode 24.5, something along those lines. We're toying around with it uh, just to get more content out there. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, hit me up on the Twitter, on the Facebook, on all the great different things, on YouTube, whatever it is. Uh, and let me know if you would actually listen, or if that's just too much. Uh, and part of this is motivated because a lot of people don't like listening to an entire hour, uh, despite the fact that you can, actually, you can pause it, you can pause it. Because uh, when I originally came out with this podcast, I was worried that an hour was too long. Uh, and one of my good friends, the self-professed podfather, as, uh, as he likes to call himself, uh, told me, you know what, I have a pause button. <laughs> and that's what a lot of people do. And again, this, this podcast is really designed for podcast listeners. The live feed gives a little interactivity, um, and YouTube kind of gives you a little extra visual, but really, it, it's a true, it's a podcast of the truest form, where we are conveying a lot of common sense to the wall. Um, so that would be the first announcement. A couple more coming up. They're going to kind of come in organically, uh, unless I'm not looking at my notes right, and then I'll just throw it out there much like I did that one. It happens. It happens sometimes. And I will warn all of you on the live feed, uh, the majority of my mother's side of the family is all in one location this evening. Uh, thankfully it's a little late there, so I don't know how much havoc they'll be causing. Of course, with it being a little late where they all are together, uh, it could mean there's more booze flowing and this could just turn into a train wreck on the live feed. Uh, so, so join in if you're not already. Check us out. Um, Alright, so let's get on to things. Social media. Social media. Uh, 
actually had some good stuff this week. Some decent stuff this week. I will warn you all right now, I'm going to talk about something that I never like to talk about, and that would be the Kardashians. It's got to be done. It's got to be done. And we're going to talk about it a little bit. Before we get to that, I want to talk about the, the great Kelly Clarkson. If you're not familiar with this story, she had posted uh, either a picture or a video. Something had been posted on Twitter. I didn't follow all the way back through it. Uh, and I believe it was a picture. And of course, all the trolls come out. We've all, we've all dealt with, with trolls, you know, on the internet. If you don't know what a troll is, this is something a troll is on the internet. This is someone that goes on and comments, like essentially just to cause problems. So even if they don't necessarily believe that, you know, they might be just posting something to get a rise out of everyone, whatever that might be, that's what a troll would be. So a troll jumps onto her feed and, and simply just says, you're fat. That's all he says, you're fat. Clearly trying to get a rise out of him, and I, whatever the original post was on Twitter had nothing to do with weight. Nothing. And she wasn't like, look how hot I am, even, even, which still wouldn't make it okay, but it had nothing to do with looks or weight or anything else. It just simply didn't. Uh, and this was this person's response. You're fat. I didn't even take down the Twitter handle because these trolls, even if they're doing something bad, you know, there's no such thing as bad publicity. So we're not even going to give that out there because I don't want people flooding to that person's Twitter account and giving them a hard time because that's what they're looking for. Uh, but why I am talking about this is Kelly Clarkson's response, which was just fantastic. I spoke last episode of the one before about Kevin Smith and his response uh, to some trolls uh, on social media. And really, uh, Kelly Clarkson, hang on, I'm going to pull up her exact words here. Uh, bear with me. Uh, Kelly Clarkson responded in just the best way possible, um, and her response was, and still effing awesome, and still effing awesome, and to me this is fantastic, this is a perfect example of how to deal with a troll, because essentially a troll, like I said, they're trying to get a rise out of people, they're trying to get people to respond, and then they're getting all these clicks and everything else, we live in a world of clicks, uh, where that is the most important thing, clicks and likes and everything else, and, and thumbs up, whatever they're called on each little different, uh, you know, different social platform. And all she said was, and still effing awesome. Uh, and it has the emoji with the tongue sticking out and the, the, the eye wink, which was just fantastic. And I love this because it really, really, really is the best way to handle a troll. She's owning it. She's not saying, yeah, I am fat, which, you know, I wouldn't say that. I really wouldn't say that about anybody, but, you know, she's a very talented singer and she's gone very far on her talent. Uh, and the re why anyone would be bringing that up, that makes no sense to me. Uh, but that would be the best way to respond if you're dealing with trolls on the internet. Just own it. Own it. Uh, and Kelly Clarkson, you are still effing awesome. She used the whole word. She typed it out. We don't curse too much on Go Tell It To The Wall unless I get a little too fired up. And then sometimes the four-letter words and the F-bombs do come flying uh, here and there. But, you know, we, we try, try to avoid it because... Maybe there's kids listening. My daughter, Zofia, is in the next room. She can't really hear me, but, you know, you never know. All right, so moving on. I kind of sandwiched this, because I like that first social media topic, and I like the last one. These next two, I don't even want to talk about them, but I feel like they need to be talked about. Many of you... <laughs> I was actually really proud of my Facebook friends yesterday. Uh, because I wasn't seeing a ton of this, and I was really confused when I started seeing the memes on it. Uh, but a certain Rob Kardashian decided to lose his mind on social media yesterday. And I believe a lot of it has been deleted. I'm sure you can Google it, and somebody has screen done all the screenshots and everything else, and you can see it. Uh, I would... I didn't even check out all of it. I just kind of got the rundown. But I would say, if, if you are inclined to check it out, this would be the perfect example of how not to treat someone and how not to to get over a breakup. Uh, and always, always remember, this is where common sense really comes into play, wall fans. Uh, social media is, is public. It's public. Okay? So it's going to go out there. Even if you delete it, it's going out there. Uh, and if you're not familiar with it, because I know many of you out there are probably not Kardashian fans, I am not. I don't even like talking about them. I only, I'm only talking about it because this was just like out of hand, and social media lost its mind. Uh, but Rob Kardashian, who happens to be one of the Kardashian brother, you probably, you know, he wasn't in a, a, a sex tape, so you probably don't know who the hell he is, uh, like we do the other one of the Kardashians. Um, but he was, he, he had a baby uh, with someone named Black China. I, uh, maybe someone on, on the, 
on the Facebook live feed can tell me what Black China does because I, I I have no idea. Um, I don't even know what her name means. I, you know, I'm maybe she has some reasoning behind it. But they broke up. They had a baby. They broke up, and he decided to just lose it on social media. Perfect example of how not to handle things in your life, in your relationships, really in anything. Uh, and also posted some maybe some some nude photos of his now ex girlfriend and mother of his child because that's great you know <laughs> no matter how you feel about someone uh, let's you know it's the mother of your child you shouldn't do it anyway it's even worse when it's the mother of your child and you're just posting racy photos of that person that probably shouldn't be out in the public uh, and then really just going crazy number one wall fan darshan is telling me rob is for a four letter word which we don't say on the wall because we don't curse here um, and another thing I do want to talk about, and this one got me, uh, oh, okay, see, I'm learning from the Facebook live uh, stream here. She was a stripper, has a baby with Tyga. I believe Tyga is a rapper, um, now has a bunch of different businesses. Um, so she was a stripper, and she has people, get people with money's babies. That's what I'm getting out of this, um, and then probably uses that money to, to ha run a bunch of businesses. I don't know what kind of businesses. I, don't know. I got it. Does she have a, a, a like, like fine china? Like fine china, but it's black instead of white, because like fine china, you know, you always went to your grandmother's house, ah, don't touch the china! That was a really bad joke. I just did not land. Um, but I really, I don't understand what she does. Uh, but apparently she's a stripper and has, has somewhat famous, wealthy guys, babies. Oh, and that's fun. As much as I don't know about the Kardashians, uh... I believe that Tyga, he's a rapper, I believe. Isn't he dating one of the gen... Ooh, that's good. Ooh. Now that's a fun Thanksgiving dinner. I don't care for the Kardashians. Ooh, but to be a fly on the wall for that Thanksgiving dinner where you're just kind of passing partners around, um, which I, they kind of do anyway. I think all the Kardashians, they kind of just go from one NBA player to the other. We've all seen it. And, and none of these NBA players seem to realize that there is an absolute curse when you start dating a Kardashian. You really don't... You, you don't play nearly as well as... Uh, you used to, and I'm a superstitious person when it comes to to the sports. And they broke up semi recently. That's what I'm hearing from the live feed. All right. So anyway, again, I hate talking about this, but this one really needs to be talked about. That one is more of just an example of what not to do on social media. Uh, and this would be Kardashian adjacent, the Jenner kids, uh, who apparently have like a clothing line and all this other stuff um, that they have built off of their sister's sex tape. Because never forget. Never ever forget, Wall fans, it all started with sex tape. And it did. The Walt Disney Company has a saying that Walt actually said when he was still alive. It all started with a mouse. Well, the Kardashian Empire all started with a naked Kardashian having sex on tape. And now we have to have their stuff shoved down our throats almost on a daily basis because I avoid it and I still have to see it. Nonetheless, this one I found interesting. Uh, so the Jenner kids, there's two of them, I don't even know their names, uh, Facebook Live, maybe you can give me their names, I don't, I don't even need to, to know, um, you know, I, I really don't care what their actual names are, uh, but they have like a clothing line, and they have all this other stuff, they have a clothing line, but what they did was they put out a line of t-shirts, and those t-shirts featured prominent band logos, such as the Doors, uh, Ozzy, I know it was either Ozzy Osbourne or Black Sabbath, it was one of the two, um, because I know <laughs> Sharon got involved in this, which is fantastic, because uh, personally, I love Sharon. I, I met her personally, and she's just a fantastic person. Um, what happened was, they got a lot of backlash on this. A lot of backlash. Uh, and it makes sense, because they essentially just stole logos, and they put their faces, like, kind of airbrushed over the top, and then they put these t-shirts up for sale. Found out about this last week. I didn't realize until today. They were charging $1,500 for these t-shirts. $1,000. $500 for a t-shirt with a stupid Jenner kid over the top of a lovely logo from all of your favorite bands all the way back to the 70s, uh, from what I could see, uh, up to more recent acts. There was a Michael Jackson one too, Paris Jackson came out and spoke against this. In fact, Sharon Osbourne took to Twitter, as I said, one of my favorites, and <laughs> told them to stick to lip gloss. Uh, now, I am all for supporting, you know, we lift, lift each other up here at Go Tells the Wall, um, and I get that. However, when people are trying to take advantage 
you know, steal ID, ideas, and images, and designs from other people, and then simply plaster their face over it and try to sell it for $1,500, they need to get, get put in their place. So stick to lip gloss, Jenner girls. Uh, and then on top of that, what else happened was The Doors. The Doors was another band that they decided to just use the logo and charge money for it and put their faces over it. Uh, they actually sent a cease and desist letter to the Jenner girls, whatever their names are, told them to stop. Uh, I believe they had apologized as well, like kind of when this happened, uh, but now they officially need to stop. And it's fantastic because from a social standpoint, I can tell you there are some images going around of the t-shirts with the cease and desist letter uh, photoshopped over it, and it's fantastic. It is social media gold, and that's why I'm talking about it. as much as I don't like to talk about the Kardashians, the Jenners, or any of that junk, uh, simply because they're annoying to me. You know, if, apologies if you like them. Uh, I agree. I'm seeing on the, uh, the live feed who's paying $1,500 for them. I don't even know if they sold any. Well, here, here's the problem. That's the problem with, with the world today. This is it's probably like a cotton t-shirt. But, but everyone in the world today has to buy brands. They have to buy the hot brand because that's what it is. You know? And I get brand loyalty. There's a term brand whore. And then there's brand loyalty. A brand whore is more someone who just buys stuff because that's the cool thing. Remember Ed Hardy? Ed Hardy was a freaking thing not long ago. I mean, we're talking like 10, 15 years ago, Ed Hardy was a thing. <laughs> and look what happened now. <laughs> you wear Ed Hardy and somebody gonna make fun of you. We're gonna talk a little bit more about style uh, because I have actually brought back the style section for this episode for very many important reasons. Uh, and that's actually kind of important segment of this week's episode. So we're going to hold off on that uh, as far as brand loyalty and everything else. I do want to talk about one more thing in the social media section, and that would be the Fire Festival. Yes, we thought it was over, much like the creepy clowns that I spoke of uh, for many, many months. The Fire Festival is the gift that keeps on giving. We thought it was done, and it came back around again. And what happened is the founder, not Ja Rule, uh, but the other founder, a, a gentleman by the name of Billy McFarland has been arrested for fraud and faces up to 20 years in federal prison. 20 years in federal prison. And the reason is he's accused of misleading investors with falsified documents and financial information. So he probably got a bunch of investors to give him money for this fire festival, which was an epic fail, like just an epic fail, like an epic, epic fail. Um, and he's, he's probably sitting on this money. So. Fire Festival, we thought it was done. We thought it was done. If you've been a Wall fan for a, for a while now, you know I've talked about it quite a bit. It was, it was social media gold. It was just so entertaining um, watching this thing just disintegrate. I mean, I did feel bad for people that got stuck there. Um, however, for the amount of money that people spent to end up getting stuck there, if you have that kind of money to throw around, you probably have that kind of money to get the heck out of there. So I didn't feel that terrible. Um, you know, but it's still, I mean, it's still bad. Uh, it's still bad. And we're going to see more of it. We're going to see more of it. Fire Festival founder arrested. Uh, and I'm sure we'll hear more of this. I'll be following it. Wall fans, don't worry about it. Um, cousin Jen, love you too. Got my, I got people jumping on the live feed here. Um, let's move along. Let's move along. You know what? I wanna, uh, I'm going to switch up my order here because I haven't gotten to it yet. And honestly, I'm getting thirsty. Uh, hey, Enrique. Uh, I'm getting a little thirsty. So, I feel like it's the time to talk about this week's beer. Oh, it's a good one, actually. This week I am drinking a fine beer from the Dudes Brewing Company. Those of you on, on the live feed, you can see that little pint can. The Dudes Brewing, the Dudes Brewing Company California, California IPA. I keep, I've been mispronouncing it. I actually got some of this on Saturday, thanks to my good friend Kevin. Uh, who, who brought some over for me first to enjoy the other night, but then also specifically for this week's show because I have not had this one before. It is the Dudes Brewing Company California IPA. It is a California style India Pale Ale. I still don't understand the difference between California and East Coast, I, I, you know, but it's California style IPA. Uh, the Dudes Brewing Company is out of Torrance, which is kind of just south of LA. I think it's still in LA County, not LA proper, uh, but it's, it's still LA. Uh, the one thing I do like about it is their motto, California, bad traffic, good beer, uh, and <laughs> that is a fact. Bad traffic, good beer. You're not going to find any worse traffic. My cousin, actually, who was just on the feed, 
uh, was here a couple weeks ago. She was out here from, from Dallas, Texas, well, Dallas area. And she goes, she goes, you know, you hear about the, the traffic in L.A. Oh, they're right. I'm like, yep, it, it, ain't, it ain't nothing nothing to mess with. It's really not anything to mess with. But we do have good beer, and you just need to move yourself. If you live in L.A., you need to move yourself to a neighborhood like, like I did where you can walk places, and, and you don't necessarily have to leave the neighborhood to, you know, have fun, like, on the weekends and stuff. So I avoid all the traffic unless I absolutely have to. I mean, sometimes you got to deal with it. That's just, it's going to happen. Oh, was that it? Hollywood and Santa Monica. It's Hollywood last weekend, Santa Monica. Took my father out there for the first time. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, crowds. Crowds. Uh, and my father's takeaway from it was, for, for both things, well, I've seen it. I can check it off the list. <laughs> and if you're, if you're from California, you live in L.A., or even if you've been to California and been to Hollywood, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, or look, <laughs> one of my friends on the live feed. Yeah, the valley's too hot, Bridget. Um, but if, you, if you've been to Hollywood, you know you kind of get there, and it's not this sparkly, clean place that you see on television and in the movies. Uh, it, it's kind of a lot of homeless people, and kind of has a, you know, a smell of urine constantly. Uh, but that's Hollywood. So, here's to Hollywood, I guess. <laughs> here's to LA. That's, that's more like it. Alright, we're moving along. TV film books. Now, I found something extremely interesting today. It's going to be a little less interesting to some of you, uh, but I found this incredibly interesting because I've worked in radio, uh, radio, television, and, and film, uh, and especially in the marketing sector is, is where I spent a lot of my time. So ratings were a big thing. They've always been a big thing, if, you know, and I'm not going to get in-depth on how ratings work and everything else. There's a company, the Nielsen Company, that is the main kind of divining rod for, for ratings. They, they, they put out ratings for, for all of the big television shows. Um, everything is broadcast over the air, essentially, gets ratings through Nielsen. Well, what's happened, and, and again, I'm not going to get into details, but this is, it, it's, it's become so in-depth over the past, like, 10, 15, even 20 years uh, because of certain things that have come out, like DVR, uh, you know, TiVo, when TiVo was a big thing, I think it's still around, um, and, and then, of course, Hulu and Netflix and all these other things. Like, Hulu is putting out a, a television show sometimes, like, an hour after it's aired live, you know, over the air. At most, if it's a show they have a contract with, they're putting it on like within a day of that show airing on television. So it's really created kind of this different world for ratings because these t the, the TV networks, as well as Nielsen, uh, they don't really know how to how to deal with that side of it. Um, so it it was complicated before that, and then it got even more complicated. Well, what's happening now, as I saw this report just came out today, some networks are getting smart to this. And so what they're doing is they're accidentally, I'm doing finger quotes for the live feed, accidentally misspelling the name of the show uh, on the Nielsen rating lineup. Because what they do is they put all the shows through for the Nielsen ratings, and they will purposefully, well, accidentally, but it's coming out that they purposefully misspell the show. So, for example, the NBC Nightly News um, over the Memorial Day weekend, um, over the Memorial Day weekend, they put their show to, and this is spelled N-I-G-H-T-L-Y, like that's how the show is spelled. When they submitted it to Nielsen, uh, they submitted it as N-I-T-E-L-Y, NBC Nightly News instead of NBC Nightly News, but spelled the correct way. And so what happened was Nielsen read this as a completely different show. And so because you, you, most shows tend not to get as high ratings as, as um, on holidays and holiday weekends especially as they do like on a normal week, whatever it might be. So NBC, in order to preserve their ratings for NBC Nightly News, misspelled it on purpose, so it read it as a different show. Um, and they've been doing this. In fact, C the e uh, CBS Evening News did the same thing uh, and simply left the E out of news so that it wouldn't affect their ratings. Uh, I'm really not sure how I feel about this. Let me know live feed uh, kind of what you you feel about it. Uh, I feel like it's partly a way to get around the Nielsen ratings because they're absolutely wrong. In fact, I'm seeing Enrique 20 years. It, it really is. I mean, ever since TiVo came out, uh, the ratings companies haven't known what to do. They haven't known what to do. It, it's a conundrum for them, and they have no way of, of actually tracking those. Uh, and part of it is because... Part of it is because... 
you can essentially DVR a show and then never watch it. So I get why it's complicated. However, you know, we live in a world where I'm recording a podcast in my home studio and I have a bunch of people watching me on Facebook Live and you're going to tell me that you can't figure out the ratings for a freaking show? Get with it. So I'm not sure how I feel because it is a little bit of cheating the system. Um, but ratings also just come down to, to marketing numbers and, and so that people can, so that the sales people for each of these networks can go out and sell more ad time. So really, I don't see how anyone's losing. It's just they found a way to, to trick the system. For those of you out there that are Patriots fans, uh, Bill Belichick's really good at this, so I guess I cannot be too upset about it because he finds ways to, to really not break the rules, uh, but use the rules to his advantage. And that's really what's happening here because they're not breaking rules. Oops, I misspelled it. You know, it's you know, a slap on the wrist. Yeah, it's not going not gonna to happen. All right. So much for that. We're gonna, I'm going to kind of follow this. We'll see what happens. Uh, this was fantastic. This one came up in the past few days, uh, an article from The Atlantic. And the reason I say it's fantastic is because what I'm finding, and this is, and I really don't mean this to prop myself up, but there have been so many instances over the past few episodes where I found a random story or something I was interested in, spoke about it on the podcast, and suddenly a few weeks later, it's a big thing. You know, like like the girlfriend with the boyfriend that, like, she was just convicted and, and the case was that, that she helped force him to suicide. I was talking about that months ago, before it even went to trial. Um, and this is one of those instances where, past couple episodes, I talked about terrible movies coming out. We talked about The Mummy and uh, Pirates 5. I don't even know what the heck it was called. Uh, and Transformers The Last Night, which is the most recent Transformers that come out. The Atlantic put out this article, and it basically spoke to what I was saying. is that we're, all these movie studios are beating these franchises to death. Franchises? Franchise? <laughs> I think it's franchises. They're beating these film franchises to death um, for no reason. So they're looking at this bottom dollar, and it's the same thing I talked about previously uh, on, on a podcast, was they think they can get make it up internationally. They think they're going to make up these dollars internationally, and for right now, they kind of are. But it's still not quite enough. The international dollars are not quite enough. And for those of you out there listening and watching on live feed, I want you to think about movies when you were a kid, you know? whenever it was, you, really, essentially before, like, 2000. So I, I guess if, you know, if we got some teenagers on, maybe you're not going to know. But think about the sequels that came out, you know, in the 70s, 80s, and the little 90s it kind of started, but especially the 70s and 80s. You know, I mean, we did have Police Academy 6, but they kept making money. So what these studios are doing now is, despite the fact that these movies aren't really making money theatrically, they keep beating it to death because they're seeing international numbers... But eventually it's going to run out. Pirates 5 never would have gotten made in the 80s. It never would have. And a big part of that is because they're ignoring the drop in revenue from the ones before that. So Pirates 4, huge drop in revenue from Pirates 3. Same thing as Transformers, huge drop in revenue. The Mummy, I'm not sure. It's been a little while since that franchise was out with Brendan Fraser. But they were dropping, and then they just continue to make them. You know, Fast and Furious was a good example until Fast 7, uh, when unfortunately Paul Walker died, and that just caught fire, that movie. But if you take out Fast 7, it's been steadily declining. Steadily declining. Uh, it takes three years. Yes, it does take three years. When Star Wars is another good example, Chris, I'm extremely worried for, for Star Wars and, and, and each one of those movies that's going to come out, um, just because they're, they're beating it to death. They're beating it to death. I understand you have a franchise like Bond works, you know, but that's just... We're, we're looking for a concept and name and everything else. And not every Bond film does fantastic, you know, but there's a difference between doing like a Bond uh, uh, revamp every few years with a new Bond and everything else, you know, and, and, and doing Pirates 5. Pirates 5. You know, think about that for a second. Pirates 5 exists. I've talked about it on the show before. Uh, Land Before Time 10 exists, if you remember that move, that animated... Uh, series of films from the 80s, and we're up to, like, Chucky 35. Yeah, Child's Play, Chucky, like, 35. I'm exaggerating on that, but we are very, very far along with Chucky and the Child's Play franchise. Really weird. Um, we're going to keep an eye on that. It's just, it, it's funny. It's funny to see how this is happening. We're just throwing money, throwing money around and, and hoping that, that, you know, China saves, saves a studio exec's butt and he doesn't get fired. It's really what they're doing. They're putting, you know, and eventually it's going to run out. Eventually, it's going to run out. Just because there's a big following in another country doesn't mean you can continue to, to blast them 
with content uh, and, and expect it to continue making money. Darshan's a big child play fan. With those, at least, yeah, like I said, there's a land, there's like a land before time, and they're still making Chucky like 32 or whatever. Uh, but those are actually going straight to. So there is there is a market for those. I sh I shouldn't lump those in together. We're not talking big theatrical releases with huge marketing budgets and everything else. We're talking about like uh, non theatrical releases. They used to call them uh, direct to video back in the day. Uh, I, I learned in my time at Universal that they call them non theatrical because direct to video seems like a bad word. I guess. Uh, who cares? Right? Who cares? Uh, all right, moving along. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. We are a mere. What's today? The sixth. We are ten days. Ten days away from Game of Thrones. I'm basically counting down the days. I feel like a little kid with a calendar hanging over his bed, counting down the days of Christmas or or birthday or whatever you might have done. I never did these things. I'm just marking off the dates and stuff. Uh, but what I found today on Upper Ops, I don't even know what I found. Was. I just start start throwing. GOT is the goat. I, I've talked about this on the podcast so many times. Uh, Darshan saying on the live feed, it is the goat. If you don't, if you're not familiar with what the goat means, greatest of all time, uh, and it really is. What I found uh, this week that I was amused by was the the death. Uh, what, what, what do you call it? The the death odds. The death odds. So like the odds when you're in Vegas, uh, you know, you see the odds on certain games or certain sporting events, whatever it might be. And so we have the death odds for Game of Thrones in season seven. Uh, now, let me tell you, this isn't spoilers at all. This is just Uproxx put this together. Um, there have been over 150,000 deaths on Game of Thrones. So we know people are going to die this season. We don't know who. Don't know who's going to die, but we do know. I mean, people are going to die. People die every season on Game of Thrones. Almost every episode they die. It's just kind of part of Game of Thrones. Uh, if, if, you, if you haven't watched Game of Thrones, you'll learn that very, very early on. <laughs> that anybody is fair game on Game of Thrones. Uh, fair game on Game of Thrones, yes, yeah. Always happens, uh, and and people die. So I'm gonna run through a couple of these, uh, the funny ones, the ones that I think are funny. Uh, so Peter Baelish, who is leader, Littlefinger, Littlefinger, if you're familiar with the show, basically has the highest odds to die in season seven. He is a one to one, uh, which is, if you're not familiar with gambling, that is a really good chance that Peter Baelish is gonna die. Littlefinger's gonna die. Um, and Ilaria Sand actually has a, a lower lower odds to die in Season 7, uh, which seems weird to me because I feel like she was just destined to die, like basically as soon as she came in. Um, right behind them is Euron Greyjoy and Gregor Clegane. Um, oh, someone help me on, which, someone help me on, on, the, on the live feed. Is Gregor, uh, is that the mountain or is that the, uh, the hound? Oh, someone's got to help me on there. But Gregor Clegane, that's one. That's either the Mountain or the Hound. They're brothers, and I can't remember who has which first name. Uh, Cersei is actually only eight to one, uh, and Arya is ten to one. Uh, but then bringing up the rear would be Tyrion Lannister at thirty-three to one, which would be. I mean, if, I don't know. If Tyrion goes, if Tyrion goes down, I just. Ugh, I don't know what I'll do. If you're not familiar with the show, you get familiar with it because you're missing out. And I don't know what I do without Tyrion Lannister, uh, but no surprise to me whatsoever, none whatsoever. Uh, the two with the lowest odds, according to Uproxx, uh, to get killed in season seven, are Jon Snow and Daenerys Targaryen. That's right. Lowest. Oh, thank you, Chris. The Hound is is Gregor Clegane. How is the Mountain not on? Here? I mean, they should both be on this list. I don't understand how they're both not on here. I'm pretty sure we're going to see a showdown between the Mountain and the Hound. Uh, that seems to be the 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 prevailing uh, thought from most Thrones fans, so I think we're gonna we're gonna see that this season. I'm kind of rooting for it. Um, I'm hoping the Hound kind of gets through simply because I enjoy his character. He, he very much amuses me in the way that Tyrion does. Uh, and of course, like I said, Jon Snow and Daenerys Targaryen. I don't think they're getting killed this season. In fact, the actress that plays Daenerys Targaryen might have sent out a little spoiler not long ago. I think I mentioned it on the podcast. Uh, so quickly, spoiler, if you're worried about a spoiler that might have leaked for Season 7, turn it off right now. Just turn the volume down for a second. Uh, the actress that plays Daenerys Targaryen tweeted out that she's looking forward to acting in Season 8. Which means, oh, oh Season 7's over. Oh, so you're going to be here for Season 8. Um, Alright, you can come back now if you weren't. Which wasn't really a spoiler because I don't know for sure. That was just a leak that came out. If, if you're a Thrones fan, you've probably seen this uh, very, uh, very much before you'd even heard this from me. 
Um, so those are the death odds. There's some kind of lower down... Wait. There's some lower down characters in there. I'm not going to go through all of them. Uh, just because that would be like an entire podcast. I could probably talk about Game of Thrones for an entire podcast, but there's like 800, 800? 8,000 uh, podcasts out there about Game of Thrones. Uh, in fact, there's even one on The Ringer, which is Bill Simmons' podcast network, so clearly, clearly uh, uh, be way behind on that one. Oh, and that reminds me, I switched. I switched where the beer was in this. Again, I'm drinking uh, the Dude's Brewing Company California IPA. Um, and I just, before I finish up TV film books, I just, I gotta talk about this, especially for those of you on the live feed or listening at home to the podcast if you're from California. And honestly, you could probably Google this. I'm not even, I'm not even gonna give Thrillist the pleasure of having this posted on any of our social platforms. Uh, but they essentially put out the, the number one beer for every state. Now, I did see on here Dogfish Head was, like, the beer for Delaware, which makes sense because that is a craft brew that's been around a long time. What kind of upset me is the California official beer that Thrillist Food and Drink decided to list on their website. Are you ready for this, Wall fans? Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Yeah. That's what Thrillist thinks is the official beer for California. It even says, California has more breweries than any state. Yeah. Yeah, no. No. I just can't get behind Sierra Nevada Pale Ale as the official beer of California. Can't. Can't. So, Thrillist, you failed a little bit there. Boo is right. I, I mean, I just, I, I don't understand. Like, I'm sitting here drinking a much better beer from California. The Dudes Brewing Company, California IPA. Like, I could throw a rock to the, the, the soda shop across the street that sells a bunch of beer and hit like five different beers with one rock that are made in California that are better than Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. That's just a fact. Now, of course, I would drink Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. It's sitting there. I'm just saying, if, if we're looking at like the best beer for every state, it's not Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Let me know what you think out there, Wall fans, for those of you watching and listening at home, uh, because as Chris says, boo. Yeah, I mean, that's just junk. All right, one more thing for television uh, film books, and this really goes back to what I've been talking about on a few episodes, and that is things along the lines of like cord cutting and everything else. And I talked about how Uverse uh, is now offering like a $9.99 deal or $10 deal where you get live TV and, and whatever else. And what's happening now, and, and, I'd set, and I specifically, we can even go back and you can listen to another uh, whichever episode it was that I specifically said this, I, it's, got a, it's in the 20s, I think it's over the past couple episodes. Uh, and that is, as much as we have Hulu and Netflix, and they're, they're like $10 a month, we're going to hit a point, because originally you could get cable for kind of cheap. You got basic cable, and then they just kept building and building and building and building, now you pay like, now you pay like 100 hey Sarah, now you pay like 100 and some dollars a month for, uh, for cable. Like, it, it's impossible to even get basic cable. And I'd said it previously, Eventually, Hulu, it, we're going to see the same thing with all these different platforms, and they're going to continue to increase their rates and everything else. Well, that is officially happening. It is officially happening. I love whiskey too, Bridget, but you got to have beer sometimes. If I was drinking whiskey on this podcast, oh man, we'd be off the rails so fast. I'd probably be doing my podcast from the couch in the corner. Oh, Gordon Beers, that's a good California beer. Uh, I'd, probably be, I'd probably be laying on the couch doing this podcast from the couch if I was drinking whiskey. So I got sick with the beer for the podcast, but I do love my whiskey too. Uh... But anyway, Hulu, what just came out, and I think this just came out today, they officially announced it. So we kind of knew it was going to happen. Uh, now, if you subscribe to Hulu, you can actually uh, you can actually get HBO and Cinemax. You know, those, those networks that you have to have cable and pay money for. Um, now, HBO, a couple years ago, put out HBO Now, where it's a standalone. You could just pay money for HBO. And it's like, okay, well, they don't have to have cable to get HBO, and it was fantastic, because Game of Thrones is on HBO. You know, I took advantage of that free trial when it was happening. You can't do it right away, because I ain't paying $15 a month for one channel. Um, but like I said, Hulu now offers it. I was super excited when I saw this. Well, here's the catch. So if you have your Hulu, mem your Hulu uh, membership, subscription, whatever they call it, it's like 10 bucks a month. I think they have another tier beyond that $10 a month where you get uh, no commercials. I, I don't pay for that. I pay like $10 a month, Hulu. So, if you want HBO, on top of that $10, $15 a month, whatever you're paying, you're going to pay another $14.99. So it's going to cost you an additional $14.99 to include HBO 
with your Hulu package. <laughs> yeah, Skinamax, right, Bridget? Uh, and then on top of that, if you want Cinemax, or Skinamax, as, as it affectionately became known in the 90s because they just played softcore porn at night. <laughs> it's, that's, that's a fact. They did it quite a bit. They probably still do. I just haven't, I've never, I haven't had Cinemax in a very, very, very long time. Um, you can also add Cinemax on the Hulu. And Cinemax is going to cost you an additional $9.99 a month. So do you see where I'm going with this, Wall fans? Hulu is taking that step toward being a cable company. They're doing the same thing. They're charging you a la carte for all these channels. So it's just a matter of time until Hulu gets crazy expensive. And then personally, I will drop it because I'm not spending a bunch of money. Friend Sarah on here saying I just canceled cable. You don't need cable. You just need internet. Cable is a joke. You know, I thought about doing the Uverse thing. I, I, I hear bad things about Uverse, but for 10 bucks, maybe if I can get some live channels and not have to watch over the air, I might do that. Uh, especially with sports and everything. I'm a big sports watcher and everything else. I'll see if anyone on the, on the live broadcast catches that. I call it sports. Sports. And not the other thing. And I'll explain why in just a few minutes. All right, music. Music, give me motion. Still on tour. Still on tour. That's all I've got for music. They're still on tour. If you're in the Texas area, especially the Austin area, they are playing uh, Austin on July 15th. They just rocked out in Orlando last night and then making their way toward Austin July 15th, which is next the next week. Oh my God, date today's the 6th. I don't know, 15th. Look at calendar. Shouldn't have to tell you exactly when, when dates are. You get calendar right on your phone, people. I'm just kidding. It's next. It's the 15th. Yeah, if you're in the Austin area, check them out. I highly recommend it. Not just biased. Fantastic music. Fantastic music. And oh, that music video. I don't know. You can't get much better than that music video. Mm -mm. All right, we're moving along. This is the part of the show that I've been building toward. Style. We used to have a style section. I kind of eliminated it because I didn't have much to talk about very often. Well, I brought it back this week. And I actually do want to talk seriously about this for a second. This is kind of two-part. This is kind of two-part. When it comes to style, and I have kind of made fun, not even made fun, but just like, what, it, what are these kids wearing these days? And I get it. You know, it's all weird stuff. But the thing is, I was thinking about it the other day. And what does it matter? What does it matter? You know, I say, have your own style. Have your own style. You know, don't be offensive. Uh, if someone's wearing a, a shirt with a bunch of curse words on it, you know, I don't want my kids seeing, you know, don't be offensive, but have your own style. Who cares? You know, you want to wear funky shirts or whatever else, like skinny jeans, uh, leggings, you know, whatever it is. You want to wear, like, those jelly shoes? I've seen guys wearing those jelly shoes. I'm not even kidding. Um, do your thing. Do your thing. Because in the end, it all boils down to silly. You know? Even if you're a t-shirt and jeans person. There was a time in history where t-shirt and jeans out in public... Eh, not acceptable. Not acceptable. You know, now we don't think anything of it. So I say, do you? Do you? And the reason this came up is because I was watching a video and someone had posted, um, I see, I could see Brad wearing jelly. I'm just, Brad has jellies. One of my friends on the live feed here. Um, I'm hoping he's wearing jellies and no shirt because that's what I expect from Brad. We have a little back and forth where he likes to tell me to take off my shirt. I might have started it by telling him to take his off on live feeds and stuff. It happens. Uh, but the reason this came up is I was watching a random video on social media. I believe it was Facebook. Someone posted and people were laughing at it and stuff. Uh, and it was high school kids. And there was a high school kid who had shoes that lit up. And I'm not talking about the, uh, the LA gear or British Knights or whatever they had like back in the 90s where the heel lit up. And I think they still make them for kids. This was an LED strip all around the sole of the shoe. So every time, that's what I like to see, Darshan, uh, every time he stepped, they would light up. And what happened was, uh, what happened was there was a couple guys sitting next to him, like it looked like in the cafeteria, and they just started laughing. And they're laughing like comically loud, comically loud, like losing their breath. And clearly they're not this amused by it, but they're laughing comically loud to make fun of this kid that is wearing shoes that just have LEDs around the outside. This really got me thinking. And this is multi, multi step, many steps to this. And the reason it really got me thinking is because I have a campmate who built his own shoes just like that because he's really into LED lights. A campmate for the burn built his own shoes like that, really into LED lights. And they were cool. 
out on the playa. So it's like just because these kids doesn't like I don't understand. It, it it was hard for me to grasp why these kids are laughing so hard. Now when I get part of it because kids kids are fucking mean. They are. Any excuse to laugh at someone to bully them for no reason because his shoes light up. He likes the shoes. Who cares? Who cares? You know. I don't think he's gonna make a ton of money selling Bridget because they're out. Uh, Yeti made them. Uh, so who cares? What else gets me about this is the kid they were showing laughing his ass off at these shoes is sitting there in skin tight ripped jeans. Skin tight ripped jeans. And now, I have no problem. Like I said, do you. Have your own style. Do you. Who cares? But talk about glass houses. <laughs> you know? Glass houses. So, wall fans, let's all build each other up. Let's all build each other up. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit in style when I talk about hobbies in just a few minutes. Uh, but I do want to be serious for a second. Because as far as style, as far as style, fanny packs have come back into style. Now, these were in style in like the 80s and the beginning of the 90s, and then it was like something you just didn't do. You didn't wear a, 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 a fanny pack. I am finger quoting uh, for the live feed, and you'll understand why in just a few minutes. Um, they're back in style now, which I get. They're functional, whatever. Like, I think they're kind of weird, but they're functional. I have no problem with someone wearing a fanny pack, you know? I have my own little... I actually just bought a, a chrome sling bag from Chrome Industries, you know? It's not a fan. It's not a, a hip pouch. Uh, but it's similar, similar purpose. It just happens to go across my body, and it's a small thing that goes on my back. I meant to have it in the studio so I could show people on the live feed. I didn't do that. This happens when you have a seven-month-old at home, especially one that poops all over the crib right before you're going to do your show. I'm not even kidding on that wall, fans. It happens. Uh, but I also, I, I actually also do have a, a fanny pack um, that I use as a sling, and I'm able to throw my camera and my lens in it. Camera body, lens, it's padded, fits perfectly in there. No problem with the fanny packs or the hip pack. I do want to point out for everyone that listens to Go Tell Us The Wall, everyone on the live feed, everyone on social media, the term fanny packs is perfectly fine. Everyone in the United States knows what you're talking about. I will warn all of you out there, especially Darshan, if you have one, if you go to the UK, you know, England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, I can tell you from experience, especially Ireland. Do not call it a fanny pack. Or do call it a fanny pack, but just prepare yourself for being looked at with very confused looks on people's faces. And I will tell you why. Because I learned firsthand many years ago as I was cruising around Ireland, staying at a homestay, wearing my fanny pack, which I would keep my money and such things in because we were I was with an exchange program. Uh, why is Darshan, you're ruining things for me? Don't spoil things, Darshan. So if you're on the live feed, you'll, you might see where I'm getting here. Uh, I, said, I said the word fanny pack. Everyone looked at me very confused. Very confused. I said, what, that's a fanny pack. What do you mean? And then it was explained to me what a fanny is in the UK. And that would be a part of the... and Not an in-depth part. I'm just not going to say it. That is a part of the female anatomy that men don't have. So figure it out. You know, out here people say fanny might be mean, but it's a different thing in the UK. It is a good place to store things, Bridget. Maybe that's where the term came from. I'm not sure. Uh, but just keep that in mind. I mean, do you, like I said, but just be aware, if you say a fanny pack in the UK, you'll get some weird looks. It's just like when someone from England comes here looking for a cigarette. If people aren't familiar with the term, with the English term for a cigarette, you might be like, whoa, 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 first of all... We don't use that term here in second of all, like, is that how you, that's how you look for a date? No, no, no. Uh, yeah, no, I just don't say it on the feed. I just try not to say it on the feed. Um, anyway, so a little style knowledge for many of you, except Darshan, who already knew. Um, but wear your, wear your hip packs. Uh, I call them hip pouches or hip packs simply because I learned that years ago when I just, in my brain, like, I just made the habit of it so that there was no confusion. Uh, but it genuinely happened to me as a 14-year-old exchange student in the UK. 14, 15, ah, whatever, 14 or 15. Um, all right, so I put this in style, but here's what I want to talk about. 
And this is part of the big announcement that I tease at Top Show. A couple big announcements. Now, we've been working, especially ever since the election, we've been working toward lifting each other up, being positive, uh, and, and, and simply just not not putting other people down. You know. Now, obviously, made fun of the 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 useless Kardashians, and and you know because they built an empire on a sex tape and then started stealing other people's logos and ideas. Uh, so yes, they need to be made fun of. You know, or a dad who rides around with his with his three month old on the gas tank of his bicycle or his bicycle motorcycle. Yeah, no, we're gonna make fun of those guys. We're gonna do it. That has to be done. However, when it comes to other stuff that, um, you know, like I said, light up shoes. You know, cool shoes. I want the shoes. I'd love to have those shoes. You know, unfortunately, my friend that has the shoes hates me, uh, so he will never help me make them. I'll have to get them somewhere else, or someone else that knows how to make them. Uh, but again, you know, so to each their own. To each their own. You know, to each their own. Um, but when it comes to hobbies, I think this is a point where we all need to lift each other up and recognize something important. Everyone has different hobbies. Okay, wall fans? You know, maybe you, maybe you like to read comic books. Maybe you like to watch movies. Maybe you like to play Dungeons and Dragons. Maybe you like to watch sports. Maybe you like to play sports. Maybe you like to knit. Now, all of those things are things that could easily be made fun of by other people because someone is doing those things. Well, I want to stop that. I want to put an end to that, wall fans, because I do want to point out, like I said, with style, it all boils down to silly. So my favorite thing is, you know, I have a lot of friends, they hate sports. What's the point of sports? What's the point? But each of those people has their own thing, whether it's reading comic books, whether it's coding for a computer, whether it's building things with LED lights. Do you. Do what you enjoy. And this came up, and I've, I've always thought about this. This came up because on ESPN Radio, uh, Kelvin Washington, well, Darson, you should continue to watch TV and listen to podcasts. That, that's, that's your job, number one wall fan. Uh, this came up on ESPN Radio. Great Kelvin Washington. I actually used to work with him, played a little basketball with him in the, the Disney Basketball League. Um, and he was talking about kind of wrestling fans and everything else, you know, um, and, and, and kind of what they'll get into. And maybe how wrestling fans might be also be into superhero movies and everything else. You know, that's another thing, superhero movies. You know, or maybe you're into romantic comedies. Uh, maybe you're into horror. Whatever that might be. Do you. Do you. Because it's all the same in the end. You know, oh, sports is silly. It's just got a bunch of guys running around. No, well, movies are silly. You know, movies are silly. Just think about all that. Think about how it all boils down to the same thing. It's all silly. It just depends what you enjoy. And because of that, I'm going to tell all of you out there right now, wall fans, we had a little term that I used since the beginning of this podcast. It is fake wrestling, Enrique. I know. Uh, my friend from high school, Enrique, is on there. He was a world-class wrestler. Um, so he did the real wrestling. Uh, no, but don't call things silly. Uh, it all comes down to the same. Do you? Yeah, well, a bunch of guys running around on a field. Well, you're, you're looking at you're looking at cartoons, like you know, on a page, you know, or you're you're watching a, a silly movie where a guy flies around, you know, or you're, you're knitting something that's boring, or you're you're playing with LED lights that is boring. How do you do that? How do you code? You know, and it's because of that. This term that I've used since the very beginning of Go Tell to the Wall podcast is officially being retired today on episode 24 of Go Tell to the Wall podcast. And that would be the term sports ball. We are retiring officially today. This is going to be the last time I say it. Sports ball. I mean, I may say it again. But we're not going to have a sports ball section. And I think it's funny. I think it's funny. Many fans think it's funny. It's, it's a favorite thing of the show from, from fans that haven't heard, had never heard that term. But the bottom line is, this is a term that some friends of mine have used because they don't like sports. So they call it sports ball. And I thought it was funny, so I continued to use it. But in the spirit of lifting everyone up and respecting that everyone can have their own interest, we will no longer be using the term sports ball. It will now just be called sports, or baseball, or football, whatever it might be. In the same way that I don't sit here and say comic book nerds, you know, or computer geeks. Whatever it might be, we're, we're stopping it. No more using the term sports ball. Uh, we're calling it sports because that's what it's called. 
That's what it's called. I know, Darshan. I'm so very sorry. Uh, but I hope you can understand where I'm coming from uh, as, as far as the retiring of that term. We're just, we're going to give full respect to everyone's hobbies uh, and, and everything else. And in fact, we're going to add a new little slogan to go tell it to the wall. And we're going to use this one from here on out. And it means a lot to me. And it came to me today as because I'm going to tell you all, all out there, wall fans, you know, there's a lot of people out there that have podcasts. A lot of people out there that have YouTube channels. And some people are just throwing stuff together. But there's many people that put time and energy and effort into doing those things. And that's all that matters. Maybe it's not the best. I mean, clearly the best things don't rise to the top. You know, they don't. Because the Kardashians get to make $1,500 t-shirts when they have no talent. So it's hard to get to the top. But all of you out there, wall fans, just respect. Respect that friend of yours, you know, th that's creating YouTube videos. Respect that friend of yours that has a podcast. You know, unless they're just throwing something together, th then maybe help them along the way. But respect that. Respect the work that goes into that. Because you know what is most important in this world when it comes to anything along those lines? is passion. Do what you're passionate about. And that's why the new, not the new motto, but a new slogan to go along with use common sense on Go Tell Us the Wall is have passion. So when you're out there tweeting, whatever it is, and you're doing something that everyone else might think is funky, hashtag have passion. Have passion. I do know, Bridget. It's not as so much uh, to, to look down on sports, but... Because of that, we are going to retire the sports ball term uh, and have passion moving forward is what we're going to put out into the world uh, because that's what's most important. If you're passionate about knitting, that's great. You're passionate about coding, that's great. You're passionate about sports, that's great. You're passionate about sleeping, do you. Do you. Be the best sleeper that's out there. And you may never get to be the best sleeper that's out there, but have that passion to one day possibly become the best sleeper out there. Because that's what we need more of in the world. That's what we need more of. Is passion. And remember, you might have that neighbor, that friend, they might get discouraged. In fact, there's a music video out there from the great, less than, the great band Less Than Jake. It's called Bomb Drop. If you have not seen this video, I highly recommend you watch this, this video. It's a music video. It's on YouTube. Just look up Less Than Jake, Bomb Drop. And it, it, is, it really personifies what it's like for someone to just put themselves out there. To just put themselves out there. It's tough. I'm an attention whore. But sometimes it's tough for me to come in here and get in front of this microphone in front of this live feed. And I'll tell you, those first 15 episodes, those first 15 episodes, and Bridget's on here. She's a huge Less Than Jake fan. Bridget and I uh, have a, a very similar taste in music. And I... I I always forget that, and I'm like, why are we not listening to more of like the music we like? Um, but have that passion. Check out that video. See what I'm talking about. Because sometimes it's tough to do this. It's tough to do this. And it's not that tough for me. It might be tougher for that, that kid out there that just wants to play a song that he wrote and put it on YouTube. And then immediately everyone's putting him down. Or her. Whatever it might be. Just keep that in mind. Don't put him down. Maybe you don't love it. Doesn't mean you have to put it down. You don't have to go out and tell everyone how much you don't love it. You know, you don't have to tell everyone you do love it, just, you know, even though you don't. But don't put it down. Just have passion. And that's what we're doing. I don't use hashtags, but I'm saying right now, hashtag have passion. All of you out there, wall fans, because that's all that's important. Not all that's important. I mean, there's a lot more important stuff, but that's what it boils down to. Do you. Do what you enjoy. Unless what you enjoy is shooting off fireworks near my house, uh, then stop. Because Jesus Christ, I could not sleep the other night. I don't know how Zofia slept through it. It was going off. Sitting on my porch with a hose. Hose turned on. Oh my God. Out of hand. Out of hand. All right, we're going to move right along. Move right along. Have passion, my fans. I got a little bit of tech news. Uh, Jawbone is officially closing up. Closing up business. I'm actually looking at a Jawbone uh, speaker. Bluetooth speaker right in front of me. Which is crazy. Because Jawbone was like one of the more popular brands if, like really five, ten years ago. Maybe a full ten, but still pretty popular like five years ago. Apple Store had them in all their Apple Store. Um, 
happy. And it was just one of those bigger brands. It was just one of those bigger brands. And now they're finally gone. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, I'm looking at Jambox. They were real popular with their Jambox. They had some uh, like bracelets, uh, like fitness trackers. They they were kind of one of the first fitness trackers I think that came out. And uh, somebody could correct me if I'm wrong. I'm I'm not positive on that, but those were one of the, that was one of the first ones that I saw. Um, and that's what it comes down to. I do want to. We're running out of time, Wall fans. I do want to talk about one more thing. Uh, for those of you that have listened to the podcast previously, you know. We don't get political on the podcast. I don't do it. It's all about common sense. The only time we even brush politics is if there's a little bit of common sense involved. Uh, there's a little bit of common sense involved in what's going on right now uh, with the Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan. Uh, there's a story that came out in the past day or so about a dress code for women um, going into the lobby of the Speaker of the House. So essentially press women who would be going into this lobby, uh, they were told they were no longer allowed to wear sleeveless shirts. Like sleeveless dresses, you know, women, you have sleeveless dresses. And there's a big uproar, understandably. And I actually thought about this one for a minute because it was like, well, there's dress codes places. You know, I get it. I've, done, I, I've worked, I've, I mean, many, many years ago, worked at places that had dress code. It's weird for me in L.A. because I've always worked jobs where it's like, <laughs> you know, maybe I'm wearing a button-up. You know, oh, i got to meet a client. I'll throw the jacket, you know, throw on a jacket, but I'm still wearing jeans, you know. Um, but the amazing thing about this is, oh wow, we totally just had a brown out. Uh, sorry guys, I'm hoping you're still on the feed. Apologies for that. We just totally had a, a, a quick brown out. Um, everything flickered here in the studio. Uh, the beauty is a beautiful thing about living in LA when there's a heat wave coming through. Um, a lot of power usage. Uh, and I thought about it because it was like, okay, I get it. You know, there needs to be a dress code and everything else. Oh, that's true. Enrique is a friend of mine from high school. I had a dress code in high school. You know, I have no problem. That, that was the tradition of the dress code and everything else. I, I get it. Um, so, but the thing, the thing that got me on this is it was up to the discretion of the Speaker of the House. And I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. If you think this is okay, what's happening right now, at his discretion, ordering women to wear sleeves... You need to watch The Handmaid's Tale on Hulu. Because this doesn't seem like a big thing, but watch The Handmaid's Tale and understand that we are actually slowly regressing toward that. That is what's happening right there. So yes, it seems like a minor thing. You need to wear sleeves. Oh, okay, maybe there's a dress code. You know, and people were like, well, men have to wear suit and tie and everything else, you know? Oh, and closed-toed shoes, thank you. And closed-toed shoes. And I'm a big proponent of the closed-toed shoes, uh, but that's only because I've worked on a lot of sets. And that's a, that's a different story. <laughs> like, you know, I've worked on a lot, of, uh, a, a lot of concert stages and a lot of TV sets and other live events, and you need to have closed-toed shoes there uh, simply because you could lose a toe. However, when you're reporting on politics, you don't need closed-toed shoes. And that's what's happening here. And I think everyone that thinks that's okay needs to go watch Handmaid's Tale and understand why it's not okay. Why it's not okay. And while you're doing all of that, have some goddamn passion. Passion and compassion. We need to have compassion as well. Um, but have passion is going to be our new motto moving forward. Uh, because honestly, I have passion for this. I have passion for talking like an idiot, for interacting with anyone that likes to come on here and interact, for, for looking at where around the world, people are listening to this podcast, and honestly, going out and doing live events. I mean, that's my real passion, is going out and doing live events. This is all just a, this is a big marketing vehicle uh, for me, and because I enjoy doing it. But have passion, no matter what you do. Have that passion, and let's spread that, wall fans. I want every one of you to be spreading that, along with the common sense, because that's important, too. Have passion, but have common sense. Use common sense when you're having your... Oh, we might have a new send. <laughs> Darshan, get on that. Darshan, Darshan, work on that. Work on that new send-off here. Um, all right. We are just about out of time. Seriously, thank you. Uh, Facebook Live, you can stick around for a second. Uh, uh, we're going to sign off on the podcast itself. Uh, but social, the, the live social media, we'll, we'll hang out there for just a minute. Um, as I finish my beer, I'm seeing... Uh, have passion. Oh, see... Darshan, you better get with it. Dar uh, Bridget's beating you on some of these things. 
have have passionate sense. But we need the common in there too, and we need the common. Um, so we're going to sign off here on the podcast. Uh, as always, this was Go Tell It to the Wall podcast. I am your host, Sean O'Rourke. This has been episode 24. You can always, always find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash go tell it to the wall, on Twitter, at tell the wall pod, or at Magic Muppet, which is my personal Twitter account. Of course, we have now, for a few weeks, been on YouTube. So search go tell it to the wall on YouTube, and you can see all kinds of fun videos and live feeds and everything else. Uh, if, if you're watching this on uh, on on any of the social platforms and not actually hearing the podcast, you can find the podcast itself on iTunes, on Google Play, on Podomatic where it's hosted, as well as uh, on really any of your favorite podcast sites. I, I swear, like every week, someone's like, oh, dude, I found your podcast on, on Pod Stitcher, or Pod Kicker, or Pod Muppet, or whatever they, all these pod things. Uh, it, it's everywhere. The RSS feed just gets fixed up, uh, picked up from just about everyone. Uh, so again, Thank you all for joining. I do truly love all of you, and I appreciate you joining us every week or every other week, however often, if you're just listening to the audio, because that's the beauty of podcasting. You get to listen to it whenever you want, on your phone, on your computer, whatever it might be. Uh, but always check out the other stuff, too. Pod Muppet. <laughs> that, that's my example, Amelia. Uh, that's the new website, Pod Muppet. Um, so we're going to sign off for this week. It's been episode 24. I am, as always, the one and only Sean Work hosting Go Tell to the Wall podcast. And remember, Wall fans... No matter who you meet, no matter what you do, no matter why you do it, have passion, but always, 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 always use common sense. All right, Facebook Live. Oh, oh, my mics are all over the place. Uh, thanks for joining, everyone. Yeah, I mean, I see Amelia. Get on that. Maybe you can. We can create a uh, Pod Muppet podcast app. I don't even know how that stuff works, honestly. I just know my hosting. Uh, through Podomatic, and then it all gets parsed out to all of the different mediums, that different sites and, and everything else. Oh, use common sense passionately. I do kind of like that one, Bridget. Mm, that might work. That might work. So, that's about it. Uh, I think we're going to sign off. I got Figment over here. She's mad. She's probably looking for... I don't know what she's looking for these days. Uh, Zofia, I hope, is asleep. I gotta check on that. I had, we had a poop catastrophe earlier. Oh boy, Bridget, you can appreciate this. I was definitely cleaning it off the side of the crib. I don't know even how it happened. Mm, it happens. Uh, passion. Passion is the genesis of genius. That's a good, that's a good one. Uh, but we are. I just I love it because I think that's what's most important. Um, I think it was Enrique said, you know, have a job you love and you you you. You won't work a day in your life, and it's true. It really is. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna spread that. We're gonna spread that all around. Uh, is have passion um, and 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 always using common sense. You know. Uh, so thank you all for joining. Uh, poop catastrophe. Poop. Ta I can't take credit for poop catastrophe. I'm sure someone else used that before. Uh, and we've had when, when you have a kid, it, like you're gonna get a lot of poop catastrophes. It 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 happens. Um, until they're potty trained, I guess, and and probably even after they're potty trained, um, it happens. Poop catastrophes. So, all right, wall fans, I, I'm gonna get out of here. I gotta go find some dinner. I'm gonna go finish my uh, my dude's uh, brewing company. Thank you to Kevin for uh, uh, for uh, providing the fantastic beer for this week. Uh, Darshan, you better get on it. You're, you're gonna need to, you know. You're gonna need to send some beer over uh, if you're gonna be number one pod, pod, number one wall fan. What do we call any of these? Days? Number one wall fan. I think that's it. That sounds good. Uh, but thanks you all for thank you all for joining. We'll be back next week. I don't know if we will be at two next week. Probably still one, maybe two. We'll see where we get. Uh, but you know, say, uh, next week. Oh, next week, same wall channel, same wall time. Same wall idiot talking to you guys, uh, but thanks for joining. And always, always, always have passionate, have passion with common sense. <laughs>